So I'm Michael Johnson. I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm also the project team lead for Designate. And today I'll be talking about a new feature that we worked on for Antelope. Uh, so it did ship in Antelope. Uh, called uh, Shared Zones. If you're not familiar with Designate, it's the DNS as a service component of OpenStack. So let's get started. Uh, so starting with Shared Zones, this is, uh, like I said, new in Antelope, so 2023.1. Just a little review uh, quickly. So DNS Zones in Designate, they represent part of the DNS hierarchy. Um, this is how you add and manage your record sets. Uh, so for example, in a URL, uh, I highlighted in green example.com is part of that uh, DNS hierarchy that would be represented as a zone in designate. Each zone is owned by one project in designate. And that has been a problem historically and that's why we've implemented shared zones. Essentially it means there is one project that has ownership, can add, remove record sets, et cetera, of that zone, and create subzones below it. If you wanted to have maybe multiple projects have access to that zone, you really couldn't do that historically. So if you had like a marketing team that needed access to your top level domain, as well as your IT support teams, uh, that became a problem. So why do we need shared zones? Um, there's a couple different use cases here. As I mentioned, kind of the sharing across different departments that may have a, a zone that they manage. Um, you may delegate subzones to different departments. So in the, the second case, uh, delegating marketing, engineering, uh, having their own subzones. Or finally, in the cloud environments, you may be allocating zones and, and domains per, pro, or per customer um, in that environment. And so, if one project owned example.com, that becomes very problematic uh, as you go down that tree. And then finally, uh, one of the other cases that becomes a real problem is the pointer record. So the reverse domain lookup. So where you look up an IP address, uh, expecting to find the server name, uh, those are quite large blocks. And again, if only one project can own it, uh, you get into some interesting issues with delegation there. So in Antelope, how do you share a zone? So we've created uh, new CLI uh, commands for this. Uh, pretty straightforward, OpenStack zone share create. You'll say what zone you're uh, gonna share and then the target project ID. Uh, so you can have as many shares as you want of a zone. Uh, so it's not just sharing with one project, you can share it with multiple if you have a use case for that. The commands and APIs that we've implemented are create, delete, list, and show for the shares. And we extended the zone delete command to have a kind of a helper function. So uh, if you just do a zone delete on a zone that's shared uh, by default, it will say, sorry, you need to get rid of the shares before you delete it. But we've added a modifier that lets you say, nope, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna blow away all the shares when I blow away the zone at the same time. You can kind of look at the data model for a, a zone share record. Pretty simple and straightforward. Somebody's gonna own that zone share, and that's typically gonna be the, the parent zone owner. Uh, again, that's the project ID listed there. The target project ID is who you're sharing with. And you'll have multiple records of, uh, like this, you know, if you share with multiple projects. And then of course the zone that you're sharing with that other project. So let's dig a little bit into what can you do uh, when you have a, a zone shared with you. So you can obviously see information about that parent zone. Uh, you're gonna need to know some details about that, TTL, et cetera. Uh, you can list all the zones that are shared or visible to you. Um, and then the most important piece is when a zone's shared with you, you have control over those rec record sets in that zone. So you can see the other record sets that other people have created or the a zone owner, create new ones, update, delete. You are essentially a co-owner of that zone. Things we don't allow, uh, at least today, we don't allow um, them to delete the parent zone. Only the zone owner should be able to do that, of course. Uh, you can't change the zone properties, so you can't modify the TTL or the name servers associated with it, that kind of thing. 
you can't share it yourself. So if somebody shares the zone with you, you can't reshare it to other people. Uh, that would get a little interesting. Can't do a zone export, so dump the whole zone. You can't create a zone transfer request, obviously giving ownership of that zone to somebody else. That would uh, kind of make the parent zone owner a little unhappy. And then finally, we made the decision in, at this point to not allow um, folks to create subzones. And this is something that may change in the future if people have a need for that or a use case for that. Um, I'd recommend you open a bug and let us know kind of what your use case is and how you would like that to look. So right now, if you need a subzone, uh, the zone owner will need to create that and then share that subzone uh, with the appropriate projects. Uh, it gets a little interesting when you're uh, delegating subzone creation, who has ownership and how that, that ownership change uh, looks like. So, one of the nice features this enables is uh, doing uh, classless in adder or ARPA uh, delegation uh, using Designate. So this is actually RFC 2317, and this lets you slice and dice uh, your reverse lookup zones and delegate out arbitrary blocks to um, other projects. So again, a little quick review of what an in adder ARPA zone is. Uh, this is uh, reverse lookups uh, in DNS. Uh, if you look at the zone file or the zone rep representation, it's the uh, IP address in reverse order under the in adder ARPA namespace in DNS. And so a pointer record, if we had an IP address of 192.0.2.5, it would be in this zone, and the pointer record would be address five maps to www.example.com. And so you can see kind of an example using dig. If you use the reverse lookup, that's the response you would get based on this zone configuration. So the big challenge with IPv4 is these reverse lookup zones are on octet boundaries. So essentially, the smallest chunk of that uh, reverse lookup space that you can delegate to somebody else is a 254 address uh, block. That's not great considering we're out of IPv4 addresses, right, <laughs> around most of the world. Um, so we're all trying to conserve how we allocate and, and delegate IPv4 addresses uh, to various projects or customers. And, and as I mentioned at the bottom, especially with edge sites where we have a lot of deployments with very small sets of endpoints required. So how do we work around this challenge? That's what RFC 2317 is all about. Um, we use a C name alias to point to those uh, pointer records in the delegated zone. So essentially you have your normal parent zone, you'll create a child zone that is essentially defined for what range of addresses you want to uh, delegate to some other project. So in this case, I'm saying uh, one, two, and three is being delegated to uh, somebody else potentially. And the nice thing here is that's an arbitrary block. Um, so you don't have to do a, a slash 26 block of addresses or something like that. Uh, as you can see, it's not an octet boundary either. It's three addresses, so it, it's, it's very untypical. In the parent zone, you'll create a CNAME record that points to uh, the record that will be created in the child zone and uh, address one. So in this case, you would do one, two, and three, and that essentially aliases from the parent zone into this child zone that we're gonna let other projects have management over. Then finally, in that child zone, once we've shared it with the other projects, they can go ahead and create and manage their pointer records in that zone as they would like. So let's kind of look at how that actually works in Designate. So we're gonna create a normal uh, reverse zone in Designate uh, for that address space. You should, pretty simple, we've done that for a while. Then we're gonna go ahead and create that child zone. Um, so the one that's just for the, the three addresses that we wanna to delegate to a particular customer. Again, straightforward zone creation. 
This is the new feature that we've enabled. So now you can sh share that child zone with the project or your customer that uh, will have management over those reverse pointer records. Um, kind of discussed that earlier. And here's kind of where the trick comes in. We create that C name alias. Uh, so your record will be the dot one address in the child zone. It's a C name alias record, the parent zone, and then finally uh, the address that we're aliasing. Then once we've done that, um, I, in the previous slide, I shared with uh, the demo project in this example. Um, so now demo has ownership of that uh, reverse lookup zone and they can go ahead and create their pointer records or update their pointer records to create that reverse lookup for the one address. Um, very similar to a normal pointer record uh, that you would create and designate except uh, you're using that child zone uh, as the parent. So when we implement this and use dig, uh, you'll see that instead of getting back one record when you ask for the full answer, you'll get the C name and the C name will point to the actual pointer record in the child zone. Um, most uh, DNS servers will provide this in the extra information, so you'll get that all back in one answer response. It doesn't actually have to do a, a dual uh, query to get that uh, resolution. But I will note, um, your resolver will need to have recursive turned on or it won't return both of those responses. It'll only return the first response, just FYI. And again, if you look with the short uh, dig lookup, you'll see kind of what you would expect. Uh, it resolves to www.example.com. So these are great new features. Um, where can we go with it in the future? And this is kind of where I'm interested to hear feedback from the community and maybe even contributors that are interested in, in working on this. So if we think about integration with Neutron, right now there's a number of extensions in Neutron that work on floating IPs and creating reverse pointer records. Um, one opportunity that we could do is in Neutron when you have uh, subnets from a routable subnet pool. Um, so you're essentially allocating uh, like slash 26 uh, blocks from an address pool. Um, you could have some kind of integration with designate that would create those child pointer zones uh, for these slash 26 blocks. And again, just using uh, standard pointer records, that would have to be a slash 24 block uh, uh, to be uh, functional. So this is one integration point that, that makes a lot of sense when you're using smaller subnet pools. The other question is around the floating IPs. And uh, when you create a floating IP, you could have an integration that would create that child zone and delegate it to the project that created the floating IP. Unfortunately, in Neutron, it doesn't have an IPAM model that allows you to allocate blocks to a, to a particular project at a time. Uh, but if you have other IPAM integrations, that might also be an opportunity where you could uh, have some automation that would uh, set up that reverse domain for you based on whatever block of addresses you want to allocate to a particular project. So that's my presentation. I have about a minute. If anybody has any questions, happy to answer them. Could you step up to the mic? <laughs> So hello, curious if we get full read of the zone and all the records set, why do you disallow export? Um, it was just a, a, it's an interesting question. I mean, really we wanted to limit the scope of this feature. And so there were things that, you know, like export and transfer and subzones that we thought, hmm, yeah, the other definitely they because there are actually new rights over the read, but here it's like replacing a, a for each on the list. So, yeah. okay, you just didn't do it. Yeah, Thank pretty you. much. <laughs> I understand. 
it is a little weird when you know somebody else owns a zone, but you're dumping the whole zone. But if you do have a use case for it, open a bug, and, and we can certainly look into enabling that as well. All right, I'm out of time. Thank you. <laughs>